Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Legends Only. My name is T. Kyle. And I'm Bradley. And you're sick. (laughs) (laughs) Exposed. (laughs) And this is your weekly pop culture podcast where we talk about Legends Only. (laughs) 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 Yeah. We're it here happens. in spirit. It happens. A very um, remote episode of Legends Only, but we power through things here. We do. Also, <laughs> the pandemics, whatever. I I literally get PTSD when we do this. Oh God, no! It's fine. This is not going to be <laughs> for two years. I'm like, it's fine. <laughs> I'm like fine. I'm like okay, sure. We can do it remote again. Uh huh. Let's do it live. Yeah, no, it's fine. This happens, and you know what? We're gonna have to do it a lot this year. We're both traveling. Yeah, this is what booked and busy drag queens do. Je sois <laughs> T Kyle. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Somebody's been doing their. Uh, I was gonna call it Bumble, but it's not Bumble. It's no, uh, it's not sponsored. Duolingo. Du du la peep lingo. Yeah, I've been like slaying my quizzes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Je suis désolé. Do you oh, know that I, one? And that's a song, but I don't know yeah. what it means. I'm sorry. I learned that from Madonna. Oh. Je suis désolé. You'll be having to say that a lot, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, it is Monday. We would like to start off this episode by congratulating anyone that won a Grammy. <laughs> anyone Whoever who's you ever are. written a book or won a grammy yeah every single year on legends only if you know you know we have to record <laughs> before these like sunday night shows mm-hmm. and because bradley for his job covers the show so yep. um yeah whoever won congratulations and if um i'm unhappy with your loss um okay you'll hear about it <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> i hope fred again won i hope victoria monet won i hope SZA won we'll see yeah, Kylie, you looked beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on your win in the best dance category. <laughs> Slay. Oh, one thing we did not miss, though, was the weekend of parties. We've seen photos and videos. Oh, yes. And probably the most important update for everyone is that BB Rexa met Cher. I mean, collaboration when? This is a potential mother. This is so essential. She's going to do dolly share she's she's just oh my god yeah she needs to absolutely do something with share she would she'll hopefully i hope oh my god she would be able to write a good bop for share one of the mo- one of the most premier artists of our time and share yeah it's amazing <laughs> dj play a christmas <laughs> song for 50 fucking weeks yeah, all day right. long <laughs> for 50 fucking weeks <laughs> Literally. But I hope that happens. We'll see. We shall see. But we want to kick off this week. It is a Monday. And there was an incident last week that took over pop culture by storm all week long. And uh, it was Elmo's tweet. <laughs> Elmo tweeted, Elmo is just checking in. How is everybody doing? Which is a, a good Monday tweet. I'll tell you. Not well, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, Brad is is unwell. Yeah, this seemingly innocuous tweet resulted in the most epic trauma dump of 2024 thus far. Possibly in all of Twitter history. Yes. People are not okay. And they let Elmo and, know. And while it's okay not to be okay, oh, you could keep some things to yourself <laughs> when it comes to Elmo. Because that little furry creature could not handle all that heat. No. But what really made this funny, so there was over 50,000 trauma dumps, they said, the engagements. (laughs) And then Elmo- Not 50,000 dumps. Yeah. Oh, God. (laughs) Some of you are probably experiencing that on this cruise. (laughs) Oh, did you- By the way, this is a side note. The bear party? The person who shit in the pool? The person who shit in the pool, they had to evacuate the bear party. (laughs) Someone's like driving to work right now and they're like, what? <laughs> this is not good Monday morning banter. I, yeah, I saw that yesterday and I was like, oh. <laughs> they're gathering around the water cooler and Susie and Debbie are like, did you hear about the bear who shit in the pool? <laughs> oh 
God. And you did it at my bear party. <laughs> 50,000 cases of pink eye at the bear party. <laughs> no. Ugh. Just checking in. How's everybody doing? Yeah. <laughs> oh, anyway. Yeah, that was... Um, oh, that's unfortunate. Okay, so back to Elmo. So... The funniest part of this for me was Elmo went on the Today Show to talk about this moment <laughs> and was yes. joined by his dad, which I didn't know that Elmo had, like, a dad. I don't think I knew that either. Is that meant to be the puppeteer? No, it's like a literal, like, it's like a character. Oh. It's like oh. Elmo's, I don't know what his name is. But he brought Elmo to the Today Show and said, oh, I run his Twitter for him because he's only three. <laughs> And he can't read. He's aging so slowly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so they they really leaned into this like idea that Elmo is only three and doesn't read. <laughs> so he just hopes that everyone's okay. And it's on the Today Show's YouTube. It's really funny. And um, it was... Yeah, he did a press tour out of this. Yeah. I feel like I saw him do it at another show. And it almost made me emotional because he was like, you know, it's, it's Elmo's... <laughs> You have to express how you feel. <laughs> um, oh, and then he taught belly breathing. Did you see it? Yeah. Honestly, yeah. all jokes aside, Sesame Street is so ahead of its time. So good. So good for teaching big the themes and complex human emotions to kids. Yes. And they're inclusive and they're diverse inclusive. and it's mm -hmm. nice. What I know. They to always, that? thank God they're still around. And unfortunately, you know, they have to bear the brunt of our psychological trauma sometimes. But yeah. <laughs> there was also another, tw I'm just going to keep calling it Twitter. I don't care. Fuck X. Yeah. Fuck X. But someone else tweeted and said, 3.5 years old with 40 years of work experience <laughs> and a massive social media presence, the ideal entry level candidate for corporate America. <laughs> That's really In response funny. to Elmo. It's true. Oh my God. What are the labor laws for that? That feels irresponsible. He shouldn't be working. He's a puppet. <laughs> He's made out of plastic. He's, <laughs> He's got a hand up his ass. He's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, a someone typical at the weekend party. for some of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, this was hilarious. And we do hope that everyone's doing okay this week. We sure do. Hopefully you're definitely okay after the results of the Grammys and there's no like flipping of cars and setting cities ablaze as a result when Taylor wins album of the year. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> More on her later. <laughs> well, speaking of singers, there was a big reveal this week on the masked singer in the UK. Which I don't want to say we manifest things. I don't want to say you're responsible for this, but what else can I say? It's very ironic. Yes, it's very uh, Nostradamus of you. You had a whole idea, a concept, and we didn't fully get that concept, but we came pretty close. We came really close. And there's a layer to this that is also added on. <laughs> yeah. So Melody Thornton <laughs> from the Pussycat Dolls was on The Masked Singer in front of Rita Ora dressed as a maypole mm -hmm. what is the fucking obsession with goddamn midsomar on this planet <laughs> why is everyone a maypole walking around with their little fucking flower headbands i have to say it's been a thing before that horror movie it's just oh. it happened to hit you at the wrong time <laughs> <laughs> that's what she was she was isn't that what that is yeah, like uh, the Maypole, yeah, oh, she was. <laughs> the layers to this. Well, she, and apparently she was a favorite. She was performing, I don't know what, but she got eliminated. Wasn't react. Of, wasn't react, and uh, had to unmask in front of Rita Ora. And I loved everyone's like, oh, reaction, like... <laughs> Did you know that? There's the girl who sings that one line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. The only thing is that she is more popular in the UK. So there's possibly a glimmer of hope that they knew because she is like a, a TV host and things like that. But pretty obscure. Yeah. This is wild. This the was wild. You to this. You did want this to happen in front of Nicole and there to be some sort of like an ambush. <laughs> oh, it would have been such a moment if they did this in the U.S. She still could. 
She still could. I mean, you just have to put on a different mask. One mask, and then all of a sudden the other people come out, unmask, it's Carmeet, unmask, Kimberly. The concept is there. It's there. How about that? What you think about that? Wait, let's put another twist on that idea, though, because we did put that out into the universe last year, I think. What if they all started pulling off their masks, but then Nicole got up from the judges' stand, grabbed a mic, and joined them, and that's how they reunited? Like you, wow. th- you thought that it was like a goop. Yes. But then she's like, oh, let me get up there. I mean, that would be the dream. And then Robin Anton would be there with a cease and desist. <laughs> <laughs> they Walks would all up dress to the stage up as with a manila desist. folder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Carmeet as a manila folder. Oh, you thought you served? I'll show you serving. <laughs> <laughs> well, Melody wasn't our only fave out there performing this Mm-mm. week. Demi Lovato made a choice <laughs> this week, performing Heart Attack in front of Heart Attack survivors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, that's, that's not... exactly that. I think this is incredible. It's camp. <laughs> it's so camp. It's camp. It is the only thing better would have been if she performed after that. Give your heart a break. <laughs> like, it was all there. Uh, we needed the heart attack, give your heart a break, like, resolution there. Yeah, this is, I mean, I've always said it. It's got one of my favorite bridges in pop history anyway. Like, I love this song. Also, can't give your heart a break, actually, now that I think about it. Her heart songs are really good. So if you're going to have Demi Lovato perform, I don't care what it's for. It's got to have heart attack. <laughs> a bop. A bop is a bop. And, you know, I'm glad that uh, people were able to um, uh, appreciate her artistry, a defibrillate <laughs> process. <laughs> Did you see when she went like up into the audience and like put the mic out? Yeah. Because <laughs> she was like, you girl, you know <laughs> yeah, about this girl. Can... <laughs> I think I have a hot. And then they're like, yes. <laughs> yeah. This was the headlines that ran rampant, and then she had to make a statement. It's a whole thing. It's camp. I think it's so funny. I live for it. Same. I. What did you did you see her statement? No. Oh, she had to like speak out. Is it a notes app or is it a? Um, no, I don't think it was a. Uh, I don't think it was a notes app, but she had to make a full statement. It's hard because when you search Demi Lovato's statement, there are so many. Yeah, I'm like um, the sugar cookies. From the Froyo. The- <laughs> Releasing a statement, it read, It was a sensitive moment intended to champion the women in the room, the very reason why Demi was at the event. She did open with a beautiful intro on why she chose the song and addressed the room, talking about the mind and heart connection. It was actually a beautiful moment, a rep says. Okay. I, I support it. Oh, and then... Our friend uh, Adam had a tweet about this as well that was brilliant. What he said, (laughs) I can't wait for Shakira and Rihanna to perform Can't Remember to Forget You at the Alzheimer's event. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, what? That's camp too. Hey, book these queens. Enough jokes about heart attacks, though. I'm nervous that karma's going to get me. (sighs) Yeah. I've been warned. Let's let's not, you know. Yes, yeah. I already I already got bit from uh, listening to Cold as Fire demo too many times. I guess this weekend or something. <laughs> <laughs> While the Eighteens are back, oh. the much awaited reunion happened at Melfast Fest. Oh my god! Fast, yes. I don't know. Melody Festivalen or Melfast, I think is the short version. In any case, yes, we talked about this a few weeks ago. 18s launched an official social account, then there became rumblings, and then all of a sudden there was a news release that they would be performing at the Swedish qualifying competition for Eurovision, which is Melfest. Lo and behold, they did a press conference, and they performed a perfect five-minute medley that honestly was way better than it had any business of being. Agreed. 25 years out of the game... Well, not to, out of the game, but like since 2003, I think was the last album. They just, they should have been out of practice. They should have, it, it just, I can't believe that they got it together in this way. They all looked great. 
The guys look hot. They're like fully in father mode. Sarah is six or seven months pregnant. And Marie literally looks like she has never stopped being a pop star a day in her life. She was absolutely serving. I thought this was such a fantastic performance. And it could have been like kind of embarrassing. Know what I realized as I was writing the doc out for today? Oh no, what? You can't have 18s without eight. It's literally <laughs> eight scenes. And I was like, yes, they did. And when they it went did. into Upside Down. Oh, the mixing. The mixing. It was so classic medley performance. We love a dramatic silhouette open. That's always going to get me. You see each member, boom, love it. Two originals, two ABBA, like a perfect representation of what they were doing. And now, honestly, you know, when this was announced, I was like, it's fine. Re-release the vinyls. Like, I'm sure, like, one performance, cool. But now I'm like, actually tour, and you could do an album. I was very surprised. They could be adults now and (laughs) tour. (laughs) It would be a fun show to go to. Like, the whole audience was living for this. Oh my god, yes. And I think because you have Venga Boys, Aqua, now S Club touring, there's really no reason why they can't tour. There's such a nostalgia market. But I yeah, would do like a, on I would couple it, 90s, 2000 night, Y2K night, whatever. I would live. I did not expect it to come that hard. It looked like a K-pop stage comeback. It was really tight. And they were doing the original like Wade Robson choreo. Like, oh my god. They should do... Not that I should give them I, the idea, but like... <laughs> MTV TRL should do like, oh. you could do a themed. Anyway, I'm not going to give the idea out, but yeah. It's basically like that Lovers and Friends Festival in Vegas, except conceptualize it a little differently as a tour and not so many people at the same time because that festival sounds like a site scheduling nightmare. But totally, there could be like a class of 2000 TRL tour. There could be that's an like- MC that's like, I think I'm inspired because I just saw Bob open for Madonna. Oh, but, yeah. Like, because you know old school MTV, how you would go, you would go into Times Square and you would look up at the window and the VJs mm-hmm. would be in the window. You could play off of like the set of like old school MTV. It's countdown, making oh, the video. I like, that idea. like, oh, and you could just bring people in and out. And it's like, oh, here's our countdown of the, anyway. Oh, my God. There's a whole concept there. Yeah. I see what you're saying. My unemployed ass is literally, (laughs) I'm pitching myself out again, but... Well, it's a great idea. I totally see the vision. But I do think after seeing this performance, my mind has completely changed. I'm like, actually, you all look like fantastic, killing it. I don't see why not. I don't think it has to end here. And honestly, they still, they barely scratch the surface of doing original music. who, Who can say in this day and age? When you've got murder on the dance floor charting again, like number two again, wasn't it this week? Number two in the yeah. UK. The UK needs to get it together and get it to number one already. There was a drag performance that I saw on TikTok. It's like made its way all through. Oh yeah, yeah. It was a little edgy. I don't know if the girls here would get it, but it was like the drag queen just laid on the floor for the <laughs> entire <laughs> yeah. chorus and yeah. had someone draw a chalk line around them oh, as they just laid on the floor. They didn't even move. And it was like so campy. And I anyway, love that actually. That's a very specific sense of humor. Some of the girls might not. No, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> that's drag. Okay. That is drag. No, absolutely. Well, in other New York City news, we had another tweet that also had the girls raging. Chloe, I don't know how to pronounce this because I don't know who this is. Chloe oh Savegni. <laughs> Seven years. Seven years. Seven years. I now that I've been learning French, I am having trouble reading, like because everything is pronounced differently. Uh huh. I now understand why Ducks Moy is du moi. Oh my god, you're learning. Like I'm, I'm getting it now. Yeah. But anywho, well, actually, I don't know what the origin of seven ye is. I it might be French. I'm actually not sure. But she, so she is like an it girl socialite. She was also in a lot of different shows. She's like, I don't, I wouldn't, I would actually say Julia Fox. Oh. You know, I would say er, earlier Julia Fox is like okay, a slide. good, yeah. But like, she was like a model. Oh, mother's Polish American, father's French Canadian. So Ooh. yes, French Canadian. So it's French. Slay. Well, she has a but quote. She was in a big show. 
which you should check out sometime. Big Love. Oh. It was like the the Mormon HBO show. I'm gonna have to look that one up. I'll get back yeah. to you guys in 15 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, there's a quote of hers that is going around where she said, the athleisure and the dogs are taking over and that's really unfortunate. Everybody's in Lululemon and has a fucking dog and it's driving me crazy. I'm sorry, dog lovers. There are too many of you <laughs> talking about New York City. What do we think? Are there too many dogs in New York City? Um, I don't, I don't think. No, I'm like, I what? I did love the athleisure drag. Yes, I that is true. I, I, um, I feel like as I'm sitting here in a tank top, I, I don't, I don't know that there are too many dogs in the city, but I do ultimately live for Chloe's assessment because, oh, and you, you have to check out Drew Drogi's parody series. He has a character Chloe. That's that's Chloe Seventy. Oh, maybe you've seen this character online, but um, inspired by her. But yes, it's very like pretentious. Um, Gwyneth Paltrow goop style. So she's not so much Julia Fox as she more like Gwyneth-y. Does she live in the Upper East Side? Oh, I don't know where she lives at the moment, but yeah, it's giving probably. East Side vibes. It's giving it's giving East, East Side energy. <laughs> but I do, I am obsessed with her assessment. She's sort of like, uh, she's like, uh, the, she reads the temperature of the city at random. She's almost like um, the groundhog that we will be discussing later. Gotcha. <laughs> But yeah, I, I do I live. have a hot take with dogs. We need to stop uh -huh. taking them everywhere. We do. I don't think that there's too many dogs, but like, yeah. I think that they are not always portable. Right. Drag them. Yeah. Like if I'm in a restaurant, why do we need the dogs there? You know what I'm saying? I get it. And yeah. maybe that's what happened. She probably had an incident at, uh, at the Smith and <laughs> now she's mad. Her cocker spaniel started humping my leg, and I'm trying to have a cheeseburger. <laughs> All over my Alaya. <laughs> my Lululemon leggings, they're ruined. <laughs> On the subject of animals, though, Flacco, our mascot here in New York, the owl that oh. broke free. <laughs> this is the part when it's officially <laughs> celebrating one year of freedom in the wow. city. That is incredible that it's been a year already. Yeah. She's thriving. Have there, yeah. Have there been sightings? And there's a good Gothamist piece out, which shout out to the Gothamist. We love any blog that's still going. I want to shout out because. Oh, yeah. We love the Gothamist. Yeah. And they um, they did a profile with a photographer that has been capturing. Oh, Flacco, I see. So it's like very, you know, he's kind of like a, a national treasure here in New York. He really is. 13 year out old owl yeah i feel like he's up there wow he's had a lot of life already good for him for traveling and now he's free yeah what a success we love well you know who might have caught a vi uh, uh, a glimpse of flacco in the air oh my god <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh, everybody's doing it. <laughs> oh, could, could you imagine if we had Luann on and I would not be able to stop laughing? No, you really wouldn't. Well, Countess Luann. She was on something. National landmark. Or no, wait, no. National treasure visited a national. It's actually, is the Empire State <laughs> Building a national landmark? I think so. I think it is, right? Like, everyone knows what the Empire State Building is. Yeah. Right? Like, Empire State of Mind. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Luann. little mama. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Luann went to the top of the Empire State Building. <laughs> iconic people in iconic places. Literally. And I believe she was there to announce the report about the rat that does the shadow to see if it's going to be an early spring or not. <laughs> I think that's what the announcement was. It was like Luann's coming to the Empire State Building to tell everyone if it's going to be an early spring or not. <laughs> P Pucks, Pucks a tawny Phil. Okay, so can I tell everyone about P what's Pucks, Pucks the Pawnee? Pucks a tawny. 
every time I see that word, I hear Pua Canny by Nicole Scherzinger. Like, that's what yes. it reads to me. It's like a well, big word that is confusing. And I immediately think Pua Canny. You know, the success rate of her solo career and this Groundhog's prediction success rate are kind of the same. Oh, man. 39%. <laughs> I think it's too high. Um, <laughs> oh, um, yeah. So Luann did officially <clears throat> announce that we're getting an early spring, but like, I feel like anyone could be able to tell you that because climate change. Yeah, exactly. I although I think they predicted winter the past few years. I could be wrong. Oh, what, did the rat see its shadow? Yes, I think that's. If you see your shadow, that means it's sunny. So I think that means early spring. I don't know I think how that's this how it works. works. He did not see his shadow on Friday morning, which means we're in for an early spring. Which, to me, how does that work? Because I thought if it's sunny, that would imply a shadow. Doesn't make any sense, does it? Prior to 2024, the groundhog has seen a shadow 107 times and not seen it 20 times. That's how old it is? No. Well, he's got a long lineage. Oh. He's got a, he's got a family. <laughs> and de Blasio dropped him once, I think. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Groundhog's Day was 10 years since Bill de Blasio dropped Staten Island Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> what? They have different names? Yeah. There's like a whole rap brigade? Whole rap brigade. When they're not working at Joanne's, they're predicting the weather. <laughs> It's going to be a hot one. <laughs> he was visiting Staten Island Zoo to celebrate Groundhog Day in 2014 when they handed over the rodent, but the anxious animal squirreled out and <laughs> plummeted to the ground, and then he had died. <laughs> it's going to be an early spring. <laughs> well, this time I believe that it's correct, because it does feel like we're heading there pretty soon. Yeah. Well, we'll see so, if Luann's prediction was correct. Honestly, yeah, that's... We'll have to see. Um, Puxatawney Phil and his ancestors have an accuracy rate of 39%, going back to 1887. <laughs> to which Keon tweeted, They need to be fired. The whole family don't know nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just... You know, who thought... <laughs> That, it's one like, of our weirdest traditions, for sure. Yeah. It's it's like some farmer's almanac shit. Oh, but that is, like, true, though. I know, but that's, like... Anyway. It keeps them employed. <laughs> you know what? The, in this gig economy... Yeah. <laughs> let him keep the job. Well, speaking of Luann, she did do her shows here in New York... Oh my and god, that's right at, uh, what is it called? Not Studio 54. Um, I always call it Studio 54, but it's like, I think it's not five below. Something yeah, like 50, below something. Something below. I don't know. I wasn't offered a complimentary ticket, I'll just say that. Um, but So I didn't go. Um, oh yeah, it's 54 below. That's why we think it's Studio 54. Oh, slime. But I did get a DM and a video from a listener, <gasps> and Luann did talk about Keep On Serving. And the making of oh. it, and how she did the cameo, and I'll insert the audio here. So I say it, and I just keep on serving you, and then I giggle, and I go, okay, I get it. And she was like, and it became a thing. In fact, it became a thing. It's a song now. It's a remix. It's a remix. It's a remix. You guys have to look for it. It's, I wish we had the movie, because you guys would love it. It's keep on serving, keep on serving. It was a super question. But yeah, we'll see if she adds it in to the full mix because you know there were conversations that happened the, the story's not over there were stems sent stems darling i felt very official i was like oh i have stems that i can send <laughs> when they leak on t kyle brazil <laughs> <laughs> i swear they're just gonna pop up on spotify one day um absolutely but yeah while luann was strutting around stage in her top hat giving us fashion. Some other girls Giovanni. were serving this week. <laughs> That's right. I think it's time for a little segment that we like to call... High fashion! 
so out of total. Guys, this is awesome. This is a billboard. This is super high fashion. Oh my god, that's so high fashion. So high fashion. Xena is back in Vegas for the next... The woman that you are. <laughs> the Dirty Chanteuse is on the cover of Vegas Magazine. Yes, she is hitting that high note or whatever the title was. Someone replied to my D- uh, post. I posted the cover and they were like, the high note is just screaming. <laughs> well, you know, art is subjective, so... Art is subjective. Um, she looked fantastic. She's been posting some videos lately. The show looks so good. Yeah, she changed up the hair. She changed up the hair. Yes. I need to see this show. Didn't she also tease new music? Like a new album? Yeah. I believe. Ugh. Can't come soon enough. Which would be very unlike her. She's never teased anything for six to seven years before. Yeah. It feels like it's time, though. I know. She said, it's really fueling my creativity. I've been working on experimenting with new sounds and writing. A lot has happened over the last six years. I'm so excited to share it all in the next album. There you go. There you go. And you know what? It might flop. And then in 10 years, we're going to be like, it's going to be all these people that she was ahead of her time with. It's my prediction. Exactly. Exactly. I could see her working with Shy Girl. and Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Who else? Um... Oh my god. That's the first person I think of. It's like I could see her working with Shy Girl. Totally. I feel like she's de- she would totally be inspired by that whole group. Like Earth Eater, Shy Girl, Lord Lola. Oh my god, it would be a gag if she worked with Lola. <gasps> Cobra. Just that whole Cobra, that whole collective. I definitely think she's all sorts of obsessed with Cobra. I feel like she must be. Well, we'll see, but she's got taste, so I'm sure she's looking at the new girls, the newcomers, and <laughs> doing some <laughs> calculations in her mind we will see also shout out to tony braxton a legend <gasps> is going to vegas so with the show um with cedric the entertainer and it's called love and yeah. laughter love and live laugh love a bit um i don't need the laughs i just needed her but yeah <laughs> i think it's a cute it's, concept for like it a is couple, a cute concept right like a date night. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if your man wants to go for the comedy, is not really feeling the, you know, unbreak my heart moment, but then you right. can get your life. I feel like it's a fun idea. She's kind of a genius for this one, because you're going to be able to get the gays that want to see Tony, but the straights who want to see Cedric. Like, that's that's kind of a genius move, in my opinion. Yeah, and then it sets the mood. Sets the mood, yeah. A sexy time. Definitely, it'll be very couples-heavy. Yeah, I know. Now, I, I guess we really do need to get back to Vegas. I got to see this, Xtina, whatever else has come down the pipeline. Yeah, the sphere. Tony remains my one of my favorite voices ever, and I have to see this. I have to see her. We it seems like they're like stretching it out. For a Tony song soon, I feel. Oh, Feels time. God. Long as I live. I don't know. There could be a million. There yeah. could be a hundred Tony songs in the room. You just need one to be interpolated by Ava Max. I'll do some digging. <laughs> Yeah. Like an unexpected one would be fun. Uh, yes. Well, in other fashion news, we have a new show from Julia Fox coming out on E! Not sponsored. Called, oh my God. Uh, literally called OMG Fashion. Fashion. Spelled incorrectly. Or I just... Yes. Did someone typo that? In, did I typo that? Or is that how it's... No, no, no. It's like... That's like the like fun way to spell it oh a fun we way love to spell it, I seo say. um you know it, it yeah it would help with with seo yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i'm curious to see what this will be but obviously a yeah. great pick may 6th on e your new fave design competition show oh so there's there's a competition element to it project runway is shaking and La Roach is featured in the teaser. Yeah. We're coming to scalp some bitches as he did on Legendary. That's exciting. Yeah, I'm excited to see what this will be. Yeah, I don't know. They're still, you know, they could be trying to snatch Project Runway's wig a bit or whatever it is. I'm excited for this move for her. Same. Feels I right. feel like we'll get a lot of sound bites and memes oh, that will be funny. Yeah, yeah. actually, yes, totally. It's described as, in each episode, three contestants are challenged to create a boundary-breaking look. 
born of Fox's beautifully bold brain, using materials and techniques that would make fashion's so-called gatekeepers squirm. Uh, Julia La Roche and a rotating expert guest judge will then select the winner who receives $10,000 and gets their garment modeled by Julia Fox. Oh, wait, I kind of like that. Me too. So it's not like a full competition. It's like, yeah, it seems like kind of like the not baking one shows where it's like mm-hmm. three new people every time. Yes. Interesting. I like her statement. Being the most stylish in the room doesn't require breaking the bank. All it takes is creativity and a dash of confidence. That's true. She rocked those uh, maple leaves that one time. Cool. This is very true to her sensibility, and it's probably going to produce memes. I also wonder, with her being on E! and dipping into the TV world, if she would ever do a Housewives yeah, I mean, they've been screaming that for a while now, that she needs to be... They wanted her on the reboot. I don't know if they happen. did. Well, the people did. Like, that was a big Oh, yeah, yeah, the audience question. did. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Well, shall we pull out our phones for our next segment? I think it's time for a little TikTok, TikTok talk. talk. So James Charles recreated that MUA look that we talked about last week in high fashion for a TikTok tutorial. Oh, she did. And so did everybody else. I will tell you that much. Did it. It really did take over. It completely took over the FYP, the Margella, Maison Margella, Pat McGrath, glass skin look is like the big new thing for sure. And every MUA went wild recreating it, I guess, including James Charles. I did not personally see this. How did she do? Um, the first try flopped, and then I think he redid it, and yeah. Nice. Well, I do think, uh, I do think this caused a panic, as did the, um, recent Marc Jacobs show, actually, which had the girls looking sort of like very oversized outfits, kind of looking like Barbie dolls a little bit, big buttons. It was very cool. Once again, I saw fashion TikTok getting a little shook by that show. Seems like some of these couture and whatever shows are actually causing a bit of a a panic in the industry. Is fashion back? Fashion might be back. Wow, is fashion back? Is fashion back? Fashion. It might be. On the runway. (laughs) I think it's, what were we talking about on the live chat with the icons, Abercrombie? Uh Uh-huh. Weren't we discussing how they were like kind of serving lately? Yes. Okay, so I went on a walk the other day, and I walked down Fifth Ave, and Mm -hmm. obviously there's like an Abercrombie there, not sponsored, and the clothes were like kind of cool. Like, it was very, I'm like, oh. Very interesting. I think that they have completely recontextualized what Abercrombie is, although you can still smell Abercrombie when you go in. Like, it still smells like Abercrombie. Um, I did not, uh, did not go in, but. (laughs) Yeah, that's, they are, times are changing. If you want to check out that Mark Jacobs show I was talking about, it's called Wonder. Oh. Chloe Sevigny was there, of course. Uh, Dakota Fanning, Debbie Harry. And yeah, really cool, cool looks. Very oversized. I could see some of the girls wearing this for magazine photo shoots. Huh. It would be fun to do music for a fashion show. Oh, yeah. That's Something like basically Kaban. making a cheerleading mix. Literally. Yeah. Also, this week, I want to give a shout out to. This week's episode of Very Delta, oh god, which every week. has already made multiple TikTok sounds and clips. Oh yeah, this mm-hmm. episode was so fucking funny. It is with Lux Noir London. Mm-hmm. She goes on another. Fashion. Oh yes, Lux was giving fashion with this. The red. Yes. Delta went on another vibes rant that was so funny. I will never get tired of it. You're giving purple wig vibes. It's so funny. She's like, vibes represent the essence of something, <laughs> not the physical thing that already exists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love that she actually did it a second time. Like, <laughs> the same issue. She she smells, she smells she fries the small fish. That's what she says. Yeah. It was such and a good episode. that fish ep- is fried. <laughs> Literally, I watched this episode three times already. Yeah, it's really up. good. 
I, I also enjoyed Lux and Delta very relatably discussing when people reply to your DMs with like flyers and they're like, when is, where is this? Just read the flyer. It says it right, right on there. And they were like, there are stupid questions actually. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to call anybody out, but also when I posted the 18s comeback, not only did I post my write up of it and then the link to the video in the next slide, the amount of people who replied, where can I watch this? was shocking like not only did i obviously put on my site but also i posted a clip of it that you could then link I, no i feel I, you on this I, pet peeve it's i yeah i yeah. this week my one of my pet peeves since on the subject of very delta hear me out on this when people will text me a question that they can google yes okay yes. they text me something that is so easily googleable right Yes. Which, mm -hmm. that's not the problem, okay? Because whatever, like, anyway. I will then go and do the work for this person. Yes. I will go and get them the answer that they need. I'll go above and beyond to get, like, any additional information that they may be looking for that could guide them into finding the yes. answer that they are texting me about. I go and do yeah. this, and then you don't text me and say thank you. Oh, you don't well, say, that... wow, thank you so much. I really appreciate you helping me with that. No, so absolutely. it's like one that happens. You could have Googled this by yourself, yes. but I, being the people pleaser that I am, I went and did it for you, mm -hmm. sent you all the information, and then you literally didn't say anything back. And you did it on my birthday day. Drives me up a fucking wall. And let me also say when I post a TikTok and it clearly says the name, at, the flashes up there, uh, the amount of people who reply, Can you send me can this? You send me oh, this? Oh, how do you think I found it? Yeah. <laughs> I looked up, I fucking searched the name and downloaded it. Screen oh record. Screen or screen record, record. it. Uh, what else? What else? What else? <laughs> you couldn't catch me sliding into somebody's DMs, especially a stranger being like, can you send me this, babes? <laughs> I actually can't. I cannot. I cannot bring myself to hit that photo button and go to my most recent videos and send it. It's too much effort. Yeah. I'm done. Ugh. I know, like, I, I organized my meme folder for a reason. If I can yeah. do it, you can do it. Yeah, we need, we need some of those skills honed. Yeah. Babe. I know, I did think about the, the flyer, because I'm designing one for John Ali. Oh, which, yeah. Which, you know, we'll shout out what it is soon. You, you guys mm -hmm. will see it. But I literally made the date so gigantic on the bottom, because I was thinking of this <laughs> interview on Barry Delta. And it won't matter. It and is, that's the saddest part. It is the biggest <laughs> piece on the flyer, the date. Yep. So yeah. <laughs> I did that on purpose. Anyway, nope. more on oh, that later. So so many people, even when I posted from Well Yes, they were like, oh, you didn't you didn't tell me you have an event. It's just like truly people. Girl, you posted that five times. It's crazy. Every time I think I'm being too much on the internet or too annoying with self-promotion, I'm like, oh, nobody's seeing it. Nobody, nobody's internalized this information at all. Yeah. Shout out to the ones who do. <laughs> it's giving well yes vibes. It is. <laughs> what is this event? It's kind of giving well yes. Yeah. <laughs> this segment is really giving TikTok vibes. <laughs> you know? Ugh. Uh, Anywho, on the subject of TikTok, UMG mm. has pulled all of their music off of TikTok. They warned, and then they did it. So now they did it. All of Taylor's music is gone. Um, who else? Slater's, because Slater responded to it. I saw, and she was like, "I don't care, really." Um, oh, she was really. Else? She did a good job, like turning it around. She was funny. Yeah, Ariana. Um, yeah, a lot of K-pop, a lot of a lot, honestly. So, how do we feel about girls, this? Well, I kind of feel like it's only going to last a week. That's the thing. I, I feel like they'll come to the table again and, and renegotiate because I think it's too much of a loss to truly um, abandon. I don't know. I, I think that, well, that is my ultimate take. Like, I just don't believe that this is, like, for good. Yeah. Watch the, like, reinstate I, I, it tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think, I think it's too much of a chunk of the industry that, that it would be silly. And I think this has happened before with, like, other platforms maybe instagram music or something where it goes away for a few days and then they come back to the table and negotiate again or something i feel like that there's a know. lot of rihanna songs not on instagram music i know drives me crazy insane but yeah i i don't know i feel bad for the people who have 
whose livelihood is choreography, actually, that I feel bad about. A lot of their performances are muted. That sucks. Like dance tutorial, that kind of stuff. I feel bad for the people whose wedding videos are muted. That's really sad. Oh, yeah. Oh, for like anyone who doesn't use TikTok. So essentially what happened is like Universal Music Group, all their artists, all the audios that people have used in their videos for years now Mm -hmm. is all muted. So it didn't like delete people's videos. It just mutes the audio of the song out of everyone's videos. Because I know a lot of people don't use TikTok, but... Yeah, and so you've got Taylor taken off, Drake taken off, just a ton. Um, It probably won't last forever. A lot of people have concluded, but they were unable to reach a new agreement. They had heated exchanges. They were kind of sassy on Maine. They were kind of shading each other with statements. UMG was pressing TikTok on three issues, which was appropriate compensation, protecting humans from AI, and online safety. And they claimed that TikTok only made up 1% of their total revenue, which I don't know. But I think I think you can't calculate that because I think... No, because it translates I think to... TikTok inspires you to find artists and stuff. Yeah. Like maybe the actual stream of the song is only 1%, but I think you learn through who artists are through TikTok and then you buy their merch and whatever. Yeah, it translates to streaming and affects the charts. Yeah, you can't really calculate that. I say good riddance. I know that that's a hot take. (laughs) But here's my whole thing. I feel like someone like Taylor doesn't need TikTok streams. And like all of this from these big artists, like the content and like songs going viral is because of the audience. Like it's fans that are driving your streams up. It's fans that are supporting your music and making you know, Heavy Metal Lover by Lady Gaga go viral 10 plus mm-hmm. years later. Like, it, the fans are doing this. And I yep. say, good riddance. Like, this leaves room now for independent artists to get their music heard. It leaves room for people who aren't signed to a big label with big money backing them to get noticed and have their songs trend and their songs go viral. I don't know. I think it's a good opportunity for new artists like Cruel Summer, for example, from Taylor, trended on TikTok and charted. And that was yeah. beca- that's because of the audience. So I just, it's just like a yeah. slap in the face to the fans. It's like the fans are doing the work for you. Like, Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's so many affected that I just, I don't find it realistic that it would be for long. Like Bad Bunny, Drake, Ariana, Billy, SZA, Taylor. Like that's just, it's crazy. Like I just don't think it'll last very long. Regardless, I yeah, I think it'll still... Like you said, this is user-generated content results in these things going viral, aside from the industry plant uh, accusations aside. So I feel like, well, we'll still send music up. It Maybe it just won't be those artists. Yeah. Um, but I was sad because I'm pretty sure Sophie Ellis Baxter is affected. She posted oh. a video and she was like, she pointed at her um, number one on TikTok and she was like, well, it was good while it lasted. Yeah, she's got a video here. That's uh, wild. Pointing at the top 50 of the music charts. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's like, because of TikTok and because of, I mean, Saltburn and then fans loving it, now yeah. you're charting. And now, so... Uh, no, I know. I. Well, it all comes down to Greed. Greedy featuring Ariana. But yeah, it sucks. I feel bad for the lower tier artists who are affected. Like, obviously, Taylor's fine. Bad Buddy's fine. But yeah, I think I think there's too many, like who have, like, UMG licensing, who are, like, not superstar performers. That, oh, okay. that sucks for. Yeah, we'll we'll see, though. It'll it'll sort itself out, I'm sure. Yeah. TikTok's kind of a mess right now. It really is. I think it's got bigger issues on its hands. It's trying to be YouTube. It's trying to instill this idea of using horizontal videos, which is literally... You know, it's so funny I saw to a good me. video that was, like, can every platform stop trying to be every platform? It's their downfall every time. It's true. We like you for your uniqueness, and then you try and be the other thing. And then it's like, okay. Yeah, TikTok is now, obviously, for those who use it, it's vertical video. And now, all of a sudden, they are pushing out horizontal... If you make a horizontal video that is over 10 minutes long, you will get boosted by the algorithm. And also, photo sets, like carousels. Yeah, so they're trying to hit Instagram and YouTube at once. Yeah. (sighs) Well, I think they're driving most people away because of the TikTok shop alone. They're hawking this shitty $1 Alex Earl selfie light products until Oh, people... the fucking selfie light. The selfie light. Why do they call it the Alex Earl? It's like, it's not hers. 
I, I can't, every other fucking I TikTok is every. You guys, why? You guys? And it's just like, which by the why way, are I you have a selfie videos light. without the Alex Earl selfie light. I do have a selfie light, not sponsored. It is great, and it's portable, and it's flat, and it's rechargeable, and it has like all the different modes. It's great, but like, I don't need to see an ad every three. It's so ad heavy. TikToks. It's so late capitalism. It's very bleak. Ugh, we'll see. <gasps> we used to just be dancing in the house, and now there's this. Well, if you are looking for a UMG song, don't worry. Trisha Paytas has you covered. She's been <laughs> sitting there <laughs> covering every <laughs> song that's like a UMG artist. She sure has. And the Lana one was actually really funny, and people, it really was. people are using it. And so that's oh, yeah. why it's like, you can pull your music off of TikTok, but like the audience will find a new way to be funny. Like they will you know move, what they will move on without you. The Trisha one's gonna go so viral that they start getting pissed, and they're like, "No, we have to come back to the table because now this is starting to like become too much of a thing, and she'll make money from that because it's not an official recording." Yeah, like yeah, there's greed will ultimately bring them back. I think I agree. Also, Big Ange old clips of oh, because of yes. Mob Wives aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Which, oh, Trisha did also do a Mob Wives look, and it was a serve, and she did voiceover of a Big Ange sound. But Gen Z is now discovering Big Ange, and my heart is yes, so are. happy. Because you all know, if you are a reality TV gifts, OG Tumblr follower, you know that like Big mm-hmm. Ange is my fave. Yep. I literally quit Tumblr like after she passed away, because I was like, I can't even look at my own website anymore. This makes me so sad. Mm -hmm. But to see this resurgence is bringing me a lot of joy. I know. This was, this is the new thing on TikTok. Yeah. Also, there is a now deleted TikTok that I wanted to shout out. I won't say the name because I feel like if she deleted it, you know, she doesn't want it talked about. But anyway, there was a teacher Mm -hmm. who did a what's in and out with high schoolers in 2024. She Mm -hmm. teaches juniors and seniors. And she did, it was a very long video about like all the, fashion trends and what they think is cool. And I thought it was really interesting to like listen to. She said that none of them watch TV. They are all Mm. YouTube watchers, which then made me think about like why TikTok is pushing horizontal video. Mm -hmm. She also said that Stanleys are over and are not cool with high schoolers. Okay. There's something called like an Odwalla or like, I don't know, something. Odwalla. Something like that. Not Yeah. And then at the end, she says, oh, and all of them love Wendy Williams, and they all want Wendy Williams back. They all talk about Wendy Williams. Wow. And I was like, what? That's crazy. Yeah. And said that, like, pajama is, like, the new fashion look. It's, like, all about comfort. And, yeah, I just thought it was, like, interesting to see, you know, the Gen Z trends. Yeah, that is crazy. Although I'm not surprised, and Queen of Gen Z herself, Renee Rapp, was also uh, speaking about Wendy yeah. in her interview. So I guess that checks out. Well, guess what sound wasn't removed from TikTok? Which one? Wendy's groove. Oh, yes. Your your Virgo's groove, Wendy Masha. Yes. And guess who did a TikTok to it? I was shook. This is crazy. Tuve Lu did a T- TikTok. Tuve Lu? to wendy's period it is like and now my my sound is getting like a boost again it's been out for over a year and it tuve lu did a tiktok to it she's an icon she's a legend she is the moment Mm -hmm. that whole then we go to the gay club and who do i see as soon as they get in the door (laughs) i will say though that mashup is so fucking funny like looking back on it a year later i'm like oh holy shit that's so funny like, I really did that. You did do that. Yeah. Ahead of your time. In hindsight. We will be, of course, uh, we'll be discussing Wendy more in the uh, after show yes. as well. Yes, yes, everyone. If you can't get enough of us every single week, the conversation always continues in the after show. <laughs> after sure every show. It is exclusive on our Patreon over at patreon.com slash Legends only. Oh, where can you find that? Patreon.com slash <laughs> legends. Where can I listen to that though? Do you have a link? Oh, I- <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm joking about. Like- <laughs> you guys have an after show? Yeah. 
Oh, you have a podcast. Can you screenshot that for me and send it? <laughs> I will say it is like, I kind of get it. Like it is hard to find. And also Instagram. And again, this is not proven fact. So don't take this as fact. But a little birdie told me that if you link out in an Instagram story to another website, that they will subdue your views, that it goes mm. out to less people because they want you to stay in the app. Mm. So if you link out to a podcast or if you link out to a YouTube video, you'll notice a dip in your Instagram stories impressions. Mm. So maybe that's why people aren't seeing things. Maybe, but that's like a big part of my job too. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? But anyway, we do have an after anyway. show every single week. And this week we have a lot to discuss. We'll be discussing the Wendy Williams Lifetime Special Commercial. Reba, we have news from Adele. Charlie, Miley, Lana, Sia, Kylie. There's a lot actually to discuss. There's a lot actually. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon, our legends and our icons. You can listen to that there. And if you have trouble finding it, you can DM us. It's fine. It's fine. Yes. You can. <laughs> and you can also join our Discord if you are a Patreon supporter. And we have a very active community there. It's better than Twitter. Yeah. And yeah. So let's get into the new music of the week, shall we? Mm-hmm. 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 Well, that little pig bitch is mm-hmm. back again with a surprise album drop. She pulled a Beyonce. A little ham. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> little bacon bitch. Peppa Pig is <laughs> back with PP4, mind you. Some of these girls wish they could be as prolific. Honestly, a lot of these girls have not made They're it to still... number two. They haven't. But PP4 is out. It's called Cinema Party. <laughs> And I don't know if you heard the one song, but it's not even Peppa singing. Like, she fully has, like, other singers doing her songs for her. Christina Milian is singing for Peppa Pig. <laughs> I, somebody, it's a not Peppa. And she's just chiming along, being like, yeah, let's go. Oh my go. gosh, she's too booked and busy? Yeah, she just phoned in some voice lines. Not us getting PP4 before R9. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Peppa, <laughs> Peppa Marie is singing. Wow. Well, she does have, it looks like, uh, an accompanying movie planned for February in honor of her 20th anniversary. This is the one with Mrs. Leopard. Oh. A.K.A. Katy Perry. She hasn't aged a day in 20 years. She hasn't. I wonder what she uses. <laughs> <laughs> La Roche <Wow>. Pig. <laughs> <laughs> La Roche Pig, eh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, is La Roche Pisset French? Yep. Oh. <laughs> and it means the I don't know. Something. Maybe it's oh, not French. I think it's like actually a s- No, it is. Oh. It's in France. Like the actual place is called La Roche Posay. Oh. La Femme. A soothing water sourced in the town of La Roche Posay, France. Ooh. Oh, maybe you should visit La Roche Posay. Oh my god, sponsored. <laughs> Yes. Hey, Grand girls. Trip. Flew nine hours to get a new <laughs> salicylic acid new, like, wash. You'll be like the new canceled Shein uh, um, factory tour, and you'll be like, love their products, and they really love their workers here. They only work 16 hours a week. <laughs> <laughs> a day, I mean. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Um, where was I going with this? Oh, speaking of, oh, yeah. speaking of French, I think this is French. So on TikTok, now that UMG has pulled all their big artists, I got a new artist recommended in my FYP via a photo post and dove into this song, into this album, and I am obsessed, which is why I love TikTok, because it's how I find all my new music. The artist is Lamont, L-A-M-A-N-T. The song is called Need a Break. The album is called Lamont Loves You. It is vibey, deep house, late night, sexy. It is such a fucking vibe. I wanted to recommend it to everybody. And yeah, I literally think it's because I was on French Talk. I got this. It was a photo set of a night photo of the Empire State Building. Not Empire. Oh, my God. The Eiffel Tower at night. (laughs) 
And then the next mm-hmm. one was like wine bottles on a table with candles. And then the next one was like a, a Paris street at night. It was like very Paris vibes. Well, all signs are leading to you being the girl who does go to Paris. So yeah, you will be there soon. Soon. I still can't really say much in French, but you'll be fine. Um, you'll be fine. Un hamburger. <laughs> this, I'm literally just going to. Oh, um, El Mang means she ate. Oh, no, that's no, all you need. Or is it? I need to work on it. I have. I got no French in me. I just got. Oh, I could tell you this. Sp- well, <laughs> actually, yeah, no. <laughs> je sois un passivo. Je suis? Oh, yeah. Is it just sweet or soi? Oh. Sweet. Oh, I'm flopping. Whatever. <laughs> I think it's soi. Je sois un passivo. I am a bottom. S U I S? Yeah. Sweet. Je suis. Je suis. Okay. Mm-hmm. Je suis un passivo. Voulez vous coucher avec moi? Yeah. <laughs> I'm practicing. Okay. I've only been doing it for a week. We've got that. We've got je suis désolé. Um, Merci. Ici. Thank you. I know that because of Overwatch, actually. Widowmaker, she's French. And when you heal her, she's a fucking bitch all the time. Mm-hmm. She says, merci. I'm like, yeah, you're welcome, you bitch. She's Kavan, actually. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the album's called Lamont Loves You. It is such a vibe. Dig into Need a Break and also Do You Still... Also, another recommendation I have for this week is from Jazzy, who we've shouted out before. She has another Uh song that she's adding on to this era called Shooting Star, and it is a fucking bop. Love, 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 love that kind of stuff. El Mang. I think (laughs) I was practicing this so. Is it El Mange? Je. El Mange. I have to practice my vowels. El Mange. She eats. I'm just going to walk around saying hamburger and... El Mange to everything. It's all you need, honestly. Yeah. Wow. I cannot wait to hear how your French adventure goes with this knowledge. I am excited. It also makes me feel smart. Like, I, when you do the um, Duolingo, there's ones where you have to, like, write into it. Like, you uh-huh. don't just hit a button and select, like, a multiple choice. You have to type it out and fill in the blanks. And I was acing everything, and I was like, Wow. Oh, you know what else I know? Um, omelette du fromage. Um, She's omelette. Oh. Because of uh, uh, Dexter. There was like an episode. Omelette du fromage. Yeah. So you've got plenty. You've got plenty to work with. Yeah. We'll see how this journey goes. Well, um, while you're figuring out how to say things in French. Heidi Montag. Also. <laughs> Dave Audet. Is Audet French? Born in L.A. Oh. <laughs> but Aude so, has to be from but something, because there's the... Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, he has new remixes out for Heidi Montag's release of Touch Me. This shook me. I did not think she was commissioning remixes for Touch Me. No, same. And it's so fucking good. It's good. It's like he has not lost his magic. His touch, yeah. you could say. It's true. Just like right on par with like Pussycat when I grow up and stuff. Yeah, because a lot of his mixes have been either they never made it to streaming or what? You're right. Because he did 12 days of Dave All Day for Christmas and mm-hmm. literally just put out zip files of all his mixes that have been like, you know, pulled off YouTube or whatnot. Yeah, he's excellent. I still think we need to get a little internship with him. I know. I have apprenticeship. I have two draft notes apps of pitches or like emails. I have to oh. Yeah, I haven't sent them yet, but emails I can't send. You need to just send them. I know, I know, I know, I know. We'll get there. We'll get there one day. Um I'd like to give some shout outs. Um there's some exciting comebacks this this week. Um First, I'd like to shout out the legendary Pet Shop Boys, who are back with a new song called Loneliness. This is quintessential Pet Shop Boys, in my opinion. It's very exciting because they are working for the first time with um, James Ford. James Ford worked on Jesse Wears What's Your Pleasure, and I feel like this song sounds like if that if the song squeaked into What's Your Pleasure, but done by the Pet Shop Boys. It, it, it kind of sounds like that. He's done like Arctic Monkeys, 
Gorillas. This comes with a music video that kind of gives Saltburn meets Call Me By Your Name. And it's a lot of, I was actually rattled by this video because I didn't expect it to be so horny. Um, it kind of reminds me of their video for Domino Dancing. It's like model-esque men in relationships or like partying, but they're like giving each other glances and then having sort of looking over the stall moments in the bathroom discreet making out like there's like a glory hole suggestion it's it gets very like porny and i'm like oh longing and yearning and gay angst and it's kind of quintessential pet shop boys as well and yeah i'm very pleased with this love them love their writing the album is going to be called nonetheless i love the visuals for this they're so consistent after four decades in the industry since west end girls and uh yeah i'm really excited to hear this new album it's a song about like it's melancholy but it's very like who are you gonna run to from loneliness and when are you gonna finally say yes it's very uh uplifting but relatable melancholy. yeah it's it's trying to push you into finding your bliss oh so there's that then there is the return of disco d herself Kylie is not the only Minogue having a good time this year. Danny Minogue is back with a new single called Thinking About Us with this new Aussie producer DJ Autone. This is his first original production, actually. Ooh. Very inspiring for rising producers that Danny will just hop on a track with someone new. That's very cool. Yeah, it's called Thinking About Us. It is an up-tempo bop about oddly, like, breaking up because you know that you're not mentally there yet and you need some single time but you'll you'll check back back in on that in a little while because usually a breakup song is like you're the problem fuck you i'm finally free this song's like i'm gonna get back to you i'm unwell (laughs) which i actually like that spin on things and it's very positive yes it's a very self-aware bob music videos coming by the time this episode drops apparently it has references to her old videos so that'll make me gag and yeah as we famously know i was a Danny Stanny truly before a Kylie fan ever since I had my hands on Neon Nights when I encountered it at Spin Street and Mohegan Sun. I dove in. Of course, I knew Kylie and, and loved the music, but like I went hard for Danny at the beginning. So, yes, very excited. And hopefully, more to come because she's going to be hosting I Kissed a Girl after the success of I Kissed a Boy and having all these lesbians match up. <laughs> so, hopefully, there'll be a theme song for that. Slay. <laughs> Speaking of lesbians, did we ever talk about that Netflix show? <laughs> we did, right? The queer version of uh, Queer Love, The Ultimatum. Yeah, mm-hmm. did, we talked about that, right? We did. Yeah, yeah. I feel like people really liked it. It was so good. The Ultimatum was fun, and like a horrible concept. It's like we might get married, but if you fuck this person, do you want to be with them instead? Yeah. <laughs> and then the drama that happened. At- oh my god, it was so good. I need more. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly. I've been watching a lot of clips of Love on the Spectrum, actually, season two that just came out. It's about people on the spectrum who are dating. And I don't know if you've ever seen Abby. She's like a popular character on TikTok, not character, but personality. But it's different levels of autism people dating. And it is the most pure. I tear up like watching so many of these clips. Like they're just out on dates and just the the pureness of their like interactions and being like, do you like... Do you like animals too? And they just like bond over things. And But it also shows different spectrum versions of pairings. So it's like inclusive of different types of autism. And I've been watching a lot of the contestants since speak out about the show and that they had a positive experience with it. So yeah, it was, it came out a few years ago and then there's a season two and yeah, I don't know. I think, I think it's a very heartwarming show. Check out the clips if if they come up on TikTok because I just spoke it into the universe. So now you'll probably end up seeing it. Probably. Yeah. My phone's listening. There's like a really, there was a sweet lesbian date that I watched that was like, it warmed my heart. One brought like cookies, one brought her a crystal bracelet and they were so, it was just so sweet. Yeah. Oh, we love love. We love, it was very like, this is what it's all about. It's just so well-intentioned and sweet. I know. I would say. Isn't it so crazy seeing people like in love? I'm like, oh. Yeah, I know. I saw the most beautiful man on the subway the other day. Yeah. And it reminded me of like how nice it is to get out of the house. 
You know, <laughs> I'm like, I, I was just blown away. I just had that. Ha- well, I just went on an amazing date, actually. That reminded me that like it is possible to feel feelings and butterflies, which was actually one of my resolutions of 2024. This is like a long Oh, so that's story, where she got the cold. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was thinking, too. Except he's not sick, so I don't know how this happened. But sometimes you could be reminded that you're not totally dead inside. Always a good feeling. But then again, he, which is my MO, it was a visitor. That I have already known, like, who has visited New York before. So it was like a fleeting see you when I see you moment. I tend to always fall for uh, geographically impossible suitors. Well, and maybe that's part of the planes exist. They do exist. But that was nice. I don't know how we've gotten here. Yeah. Yeah. That was (laughs) Netflix. Netflix. Not sponsored. Anywho. Oh, also, just sub note, we did make a uh, Traders channel on our Discord because apparently yeah. this is like taking over. I have been oh, it absolutely informed is. that I need to watch. I also saw somebody say that re- this is like the best reality TV comeback of a show or like new show in a very long time. I'm like, oh. Oh, yeah. People are going absolutely insane for it. And I've watched every viral clip and I can see what I need to just like accept it and watch the show yeah. but even with no context i'm just like oh phaedra is it like the game where what's it called that card game where it's like two people at the table are the killer right yeah and you don't know and they have to like lie and scheme mm-hmm. to get other people eliminated i don't know i need to dig into it yeah it features a group of contestants in a game similar to the party game mafia oh okay i've played that A small group of contestants become the traitors and must work to eliminate the other contestants to win the grand prize. The remaining are the faithfuls and are tasked with discovering and banishing the traitors. Interesting. It's kind of like the mole, kind of like, yeah, it's mafia. I've played that before and I was one of the killers and I (laughs) literally slayed the game. I got everyone eliminating other people. I was really good at it. I would not be surprised. Yes. It's like Among Us, too. She's an actor. Oh, Oh my god. Remember that one time? Were you playing with us when Jake yes. like popped into the vent and was like, oh <laughs> sorry, sorry, yeah. Jake. I know Jake's probably listening to this. One of our friends we were playing Among Us, and it was one of the funniest things I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> if you know, so like the killers can go into vents and all of a sudden, like on the Discord channel, you just hear what does this vent do? And then like <laughs> <laughs> it <was> so funny. <laughs> Oh, it's like one of the funniest things ever. <laughs> we love Jake. Shout out to Jake. Uh, shout out to Jake. <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, well, there's probably Swifties among us. To wrap this I know. Speaking of week weeding up, out the evil, we got to... <laughs> <laughs> Taylor Swift has changed her profile picture to black and white. I know this, this might be uh, real... This might be real old news, depending on how the Grammys go, because my prediction is she's going to say something. About what? Her song's getting pulled off TikTok? <laughs> no. I think Reputation, t- Taylor's version is coming, and I think she'll make an announcement tonight when she wins a Grammy. That's my prediction. Interesting. Or just drop it, because her whole mantra is, there will be no explanation, only Reputation. So, like, it, she could, but she's not the type of girl to do a surprise album drop, but if she did, it would be this one. Yeah. She would go number one next week if she surprise dropped it. Oh, should go number one either way. Yeah. But yeah, this, I can see, like, if Travis is in the Super Bowl and you drop an album, like, the the power that that has, like, it's going to go crazy. I would save it for the Super Bowl. Yeah, maybe she'll say it's next week. No, it's also crazy about this whole thing. She is All getting ripped by, like, the media, or, like, right-wing media and, like, all of that. Taylor, you, I mean, you don't need a good lawyer, but, like, you 1,000% have a defamation lawsuit that could end certain people. I say do it, is my opinion. True. Like, she has yeah. oh defamation case, because I, I watched a lawyer break it down. They pulled all the examples. Like, literally, the fans did the work for you. You have a defamation uh-huh. case. I say go for it. It would be so cavant. It le- also leans into the whole reputation vibe. Yeah. It's giving reputation yeah. vibes. It is. So, I say... Get that snake out of the closet, dust her off, and send her out. <laughs> that would be so fun. It really is. It's definitely that time. So I think it's um, a matter of 
when when not if yeah yeah because her inner circle started changing their profile photos to black and white and people panicked and now she did so i feel like i agree delicate featuring travis kelsey coming soon oh please no don't ruin that classic (laughs) with a man we'll see well everyone thank you for joining for another week and uh yeah we'll we'll do something to catch up on the grammys i don't know what we'll figure it out yeah if yeah, regardless, we'll be on the uh, Discord chatting. Yeah, we will be on our live channel. I mean, well, duh. It'll have already happened by the time you're listening to this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but anyway, it is time for the after show. We have a lot to discuss. Again, you can find that at patreon.com slash legends only. Or if you want to support here, you can leave a five-star review. Follow us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and Instagram. and. Until next week, we will see you soon. Touchdown. That was like a snake. Super Bowls next week? It is. Okay. Work. Yeah. (laughs) Oh my God. We're going to see Usher perform. Yeah. I know. This is the first Super Bowl in history where the person who's like in attendance will outshine the halftime performer. It's crazy. Well, I mean, Usher's probably glad. (laughs) <laughs> more people tune honestly, in honestly yeah it probably took the probably takes the heat you're so right it probably is like you know what they're all gonna be focused on her i'm gonna put on a killer show yeah and more people are gonna be watching yeah good point stream yeah 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah all right yeah. everyone we'll see you in the after show bye see you in the after show